Hello, this is Scott Nelson with the Iowa Soybean Association On Farm Network coming at you. Today we're going to talk about managing nitrogen in a tough spring. Just a word about the On Farm Network. We're a research group that works on developing new management practices for Iowa's farmers that are the most profitable. And we work in soybeans and corn primarily. Now we know farmers are facing a tough spring conditions this year. Um, they may be choosing to use different sources and forms of nitrogen than they're, not, than they're normally used to. And there may be some availability limitations on nitrogen fertilizer forms this spring that may cause farmers to use different forms than they're normally used to. Now when I was in grad school I was taught that a pound of nitrogen is a pound of nitrogen and it doesn't matter which but when I got into the real world I soon learned that there's big differences in, in the form and, and placement of nitrogen it can have a big effect on your profitability and so in the time today I'm going to go over some of these different forms of nitrogen and show you how you can be the most profitable with these different forms and placement of nitrogen. So the first thing we want to talk about is, is avoiding anhydrous ammonia burn this spring. In the picture on the left, I'm showing you um, a, a, a stack of corn ears. And uh, in the middle of the picture, that small ear, that was planted over, over an anhydrous um, track in the, in the spring of 2018. And notice as the plants got further and further away from the, the ammonia band that, that the ears got very large and yields were good. And this is something we want to avoid this coming spring is, is ammonia burn on our crops. And certainly the worst case is where we, where we burn seedlings, as you can see in the picture on the right. So let's go over some tips on how to reduce ammonia burn in the spring. The first thing you can think about is, is lowering your rates and, and thinking about side dressing the rest of it because the, the, more, the more you reduce that concentration of ammonia, the, the better you can protect your crop from ammonia burn. And you always want to inject greater than five inches. Now I know that that takes time to inject that deep, but in a spring like we're facing, that's going to be really important. Some of the high speed, low disturbance applicators may not be appropriate this spring because we'll be we'll be applying our ammonia and planting this you know pretty soon after application. So lowering your rates, injecting greater than five inches, and and we'll do what you can to check your application depth. You don't want to do it when the ammonia is out there, but sometimes when you're applying ammonia, you're, you're, you think you're going five inches deep, but actually that shank is creeping up and you're not getting the depth that you think you can dig yet. The other thing to think about to avoid anhydrous burn is to apply at an angle across the crop row. Certainly you don't want to plant right on top of a shallow and ammonia band, and then you'd reduce the, the yield in that row. The other thing you think about is make sure that the soil is closing around that knife slot. If you don't get good soil closure over that knife, spl knife slot, what you'll see is the ammonia will creep up. It'll go straight up into the seedling row and that can cause injury. And then the final thing is wait as long as you can after ammonia application to plant, but realize that in the picture I showed you earlier, those small ears of the anhydrous band, those were from fall applied. So you can injure corn, you know, any time after an anhydrous amount if, you, if you're not careful. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that nitrogen form and placement matters. And I'm going to go over some, some data here from some recent studies that kind of shows you why that is. In this first slide, this is a little complicated, but what I'm showing you here is there's an enzyme in soil called the urease enzyme. And its sole goal in life, the urease enzyme, is to break up urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide. And why that's really important is, is when we're applying urea or urea ammonia nitrate solutions to the soil, that urease can really chew up nitrogen, especially in no-tilled soils. So if you look at this graph, what I'm showing you here on the left axis is urease enzyme. And then on the, on the, on the other axis, the horizontal axis, I'm showing you a tilled soil and a no-tilled soil. And what I want you to notice is that there's so much more urease enzyme in no-tilled soils or soils with greater residue than there is in conventionally tilled soils. So the odds of losing nitrogen in a, in a no-tilled or a reduced tillage situation are a lot greater when you're using urea than when you're using conventional tillage. 
And that's something to keep in mind because we may not be able to till our soils this spring or we may choose not to. And big loads of urea dumped on that, on that residue, if it's not inhibited with an inhibitor, can cause you nitrogen loss and you'll have nitrogen deficiency in the spring. Here's data from a 2018 study where they com compared ammonia nitrate with urea with safened or, or inhibited urea with a product called Agritane. And what I want you to notice is that, in, that ammonia nitrate was the highest yielding form of nitrogen in this study. Urea was the least and then when you, when you safened or, or you inhibited the urea, you picked up 35 bushels with that inhibitor. And that's very important for farmers to understand is that, is that uh, those inhibitors do work and, they, and they're a good idea for a spring like we're, we're coming up into. I want to comment a little bit about ammonia nitrate. Now, in the old days, ammonia nitrate wasn't available because of its detonational, detonation potential. But something we learned in the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq is that people can make bombs out of any nitrogen form. They were making bombs out of urea, UAN solution, and all those. And so some of the risk assessment that, that went on with ammonia nitrate has kind of come down. And, and while we couldn't source it in years past, we're starting to see a little more of it available as, as people are realizing that it's no more a, no more a, a dent, more, no more a potential to make a bomb as urea or agri or um, UAN. So the larger retailers maybe won't carry ammonia nitrate, but you may want to ask your some of the smaller retails if you can get that. That form would be an excellent source of nitrogen for you, especially in a spring like we're, we're facing coming up. Want to review for you another study. This is a, a nitrogen form study in no-till, and what they're comparing is you can see yield on the left axis, no nitrogen, gave us 100 bushels. Ammonia nitrate again was the highest yielding. Urea was was significantly less less yielding, and, and UAN solution broadcast was even was even the lowest. And that's what we see. If you ever go to a field where you broadcast, you get out of the cab where you broadcast UAN, there's oftentimes you can smell ammonia, and that's, uh, that's nitrogen being lost from your crop production when you broadcast uh, UAN in, in like your weed and feed or, or in your burn down applications. So we think UAN is probably the worst form of nitrogen to use it's convenient, but it's it's going to put you at a lower yield level, and that's something you need to plan for. Here's results from another study, a similar study, and here they're comparing ammonia nitrate with anhydrous ammonia with broadcast urea with knifed urea or UAN split applied. And of course, ammonia nitrate and anhydrous ammonia were the most stable forms of nitrogen. They were the highest yielding forms. Broadcast urea was the worst form, but when they incorporated urea, they picked up a, a seven bushel yield advantage to, to getting that urea incorporated. So we say, if you're gonna use urea, the best thing you can do is, is get that into the soil as much as you can. And like I say, use an inhibitor. Even if you're gonna incorporate that urea in the soil, studies have shown that if you use an inhibitor with urea, even if you're incorporating, you can pick up a yield advantage. Now, a question we get often is, is if I'm using a urease inhibitor like Agritain or there's a new product called Anvil or there's some very good generics that are inhibitors of the urease enzyme that they can apply to granular urea, farmers often want to ask, how many days without a rain will it take before that nitrogen is lost? And in this study, we're showing you on the left axis is the, is the number of days it takes and you can see with with no inhibitor or or with no agritain broadcast urea you had about two days before you lost 10 percent of your nitrogen from a from an application if you use an inhibitor like agritain you ended up with 11 days of safety or or preventing 10 percent of nitrogen loss you can get up with 11 days now urea needs an inch of rain to to fully incorporate it in the soil and sometimes like if you get a quarter inch or a half inch of rain that can actually be worse for ammonia loss. We need a good one inch rain 
soon after application of urea to get it activated and to protect it from being lost in the soil. Here's a study published by the University of Missouri, and here they're comparing urea with super U fertilizer, and super U contains two inhibitors of nitrogen, a urease inhibitor and a, and a denitrification inhibitor. But I want you to show, what I want you to notice here is, is that when they applied 80% of the target N, there was a 20 bushel yield advantage. When they applied 100% of N, you can see that there was over a 20 bushel yield advantage again. And so what we're saying here is there is an advantage to these inhibitors, especially in a spring like we're coming up into. So let me kind of just back up and sum this up a little bit for you. So your best nitrogen forms in corn production for this coming spring is going to be anhydrous ammonia, if you can get it applied without burning the crop and burning yourself too. The other one is a starter system followed by coulter applied, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit in a, in a minute. Ammonia nitrate, if you can get it, is going to be an excellent source of, of nitrogen to use this spring. And then, the, then uh, if you can't do the first three, use urea, but use an inhibitor like Agritane, Anvil, or some generics. And what I say, in my opinion, is UAN weed and feed is really not a good practice because the, the potential for, for ammonia loss. Okay, I want to switch now to how nitrogen placement can affect your profit. And the first study I want to show you here, this is a study where they, where they compared um, injected UAN, and this is in a side dress situation, or where they streamed it, where they, had, um, they just had uh, the spray tips uh, uh, stream the nitrogen. And you can see that injected yielded significantly more than, than UAN just spread on the soil as a stream. When they used a urease inhibitor with that UAN, they picked up a little bit of a yield advantage, but still there was quite a bit of loss, nitrogen loss and yield loss, when you stream or, or you put UAN sources on the soil surface. Want to go over another study for you. And in this study, I have yield on the on the left axis, and what they did is they applied nitrogen as starter in furrow, and then they side dressed at V4 stage with a coulter. This is compared to they applied nitrogen starter in furrow, and they applied with a Y drop at the 11 leaf stage. And what I want you to notice is is a significant 10 bushel yield loss when they did this. And what we're saying here is that there's a time that nitrogen, that corn plants need a lot of nitrogen. And, and uh, around that V4 stage is, is when they need it because that's, a, that's entering a key yield formation stage of, of corn. When you wait to side dress until like the 11th leaf stage, you can see you picked up quite a bit of nitrogen loss. The starter wasn't enough to supply the corn with enough nitrogen during its key yield formation phase. And then notice that inferral with coulter applied V4 nitrogen was better than pre-plant incorporated urea or polymer coated urea in this study. I want to switch to another study for you and don't worry I'm going to put all this together for you in a minute. So here's another study where they applied 0% of their nitrogen down pre-plant and some of you may need to do that this spring if it turns bad you may need to just plant your corn and then come back with a coulter applied and in this system with 0% pre-plant and 100% of nitrogen put on at V5 they, they achieved 100, 202 bushels when they used put zero down pre-plant and they applied their UAN with a Y drop notice there was a 10 bushel yield disadvantage and so what we're saying here is that anytime you're using UAN, anything you can do to get that into the soil is going to make a big difference for your, for your yield. Broadcasting UAN just on the soil surface or streaming it isn't good enough to, to optimize corn yields. I'm going to switch to it. So let me put all this together for you. The best nitrogen placement for corn is, is a starter followed by a coulter applied injected UAN. Now that's going to take time, but that's, that's going to be your best system. 
Coulter applied nitrogen is, is very, very important because anything we can do to get UAN buried in the soil or urea is going to make a big difference in our yields. Y drops can be effective, but we need a rainfall soon after application or we're going to lose that nitrogen to volatility. And finally, I would say that broadcast UAN is not a profitable practice. So let me just to summarize everything I've said here for you. So thinking about this spring, avoid ammonia burn. Do what you can to get that ammonia placed as deeply as you can. Check your uh, culture, check your knife settings to make sure you're placing it deep. Place nitrogen in the soil as much as you can as possible this spring. Use an inhibitor when broadcasting urea or UAN solution, especially if you're in no-till. And a large proportion of your N should be applied before the V4 stage rather than waiting later to, for your application. So that's our summary on best tips for, uh, for nitrogen management this spring. Wishing you a profitable springtime.